up next on Hudson Church. Do you truly believe who God is and what he is capable of, what he has already done in your life? So sometimes it may take a loss. Sometimes it may take a grief or even a difficult season to get to this question, what do you believe? In Jesus' name we pray all this, and if you're in agreement, please say amen. 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 Praise God. You know, I pray, as I was doing this message, I was praying for ears to hear and a heart to receive and that we might see with our spiritual eyes how quickly time is moving, and that the Lord would show us what he's doing, reveal to each and every one of us our part in that, that we would continue to accelerate what it is that we're doing for the kingdom so that we, we may be exactly where we need to be. And that when the time comes, when he needs us at that place, when he needs us for that person, so I pray that you have a heart to receive, that you have eyes to see and ears to hear in Jesus' name. So we're going to start with the title, please, Linda. It's a very basic title, nothing too fancy. What do you believe? What do you believe? We're going to go through scriptures today, and I want you to think about what do you truly believe? Do you truly believe the word of God? and what the word of God says about you. Do you truly believe who God is and what he is capable of, what he has already done in your life? So sometimes it may take a loss. Sometimes it may take a grief or even a difficult season to get to this question, what do you believe? Sometimes it may take a financial trial, attack on our health, a tribulation to learn what you're made of. Sometimes it takes being in the face of the enemy, or as we learned recently, the belly of the fish, not the whale, or the bottom of the pit to believe what God says about you. Sometimes we need to be in those situations to learn through the Holy Spirit what we are created for, what we are capable of, and what our authority is. To learn that you are stronger than you think or believe, that God is greater than you give him credit for, and that his spirit is capable of all things, and that is the same spirit that is in you. We're going to start with um, the first scripture, please, 1 John. This is in the Message Bible, so let's read along. It says, this is how we know we're living steadily and deeply in him and he in us. So the same spirit that is in him, he is a spirit, is in us. Amen. It says, he's given us life from his life, from his very own spirit. Amen. Do we believe this? Amen. The next verse, please. Also, we've seen for ourselves and continue to state openly that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Amen? Verse 15. Everyone who confesses that Jesus is God's Son participates continuously in an intimate relationship with God. Amen? Verse 16. So we, it says, we know it so well. We've embraced it heart and soul, this love that comes from God. God is love. When we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God, and God lives in us. Amen? Do we believe this? Amen. Hudson Church. Amen. We have a one and true living God living in us. And through him and through his spirit, we can do all things, all things. Amen. Philippians 4.13, we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. How? Through his spirit. 
I can do all things. Hudson Church, say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not some things, not a little bit of things, not a couple of things, all things. Amen? Do we believe this? Because through Jesus, we have already overcome. Through Jesus, we are already victorious. Amen? Through Jesus, we already have eternal life. Through Jesus, we are already forgiven. Amen? Amen. Through Jesus, we have life. We have joy. We have prosperity. We have peace. We have healing. He's given everything to us when we believe. When we believe, we already have these things. And we may look at these things with our physical eyes, not our spiritual eyes, and say to ourselves, like, it doesn't look that way or it doesn't feel that way. Or you're probably looking at me and saying, like, why is she even saying that? Like, she doesn't know my situation. She doesn't know what's happening at work. She doesn't know what's happening at home. She doesn't know my, my job situation. She hasn't seen my bank account. She doesn't know about my, my marriage. And I don't know about those things, but what I do know and what I have seen is that the Holy Spirit has moved and made miracles. I've seen healing. I've seen change. I've seen breakthroughs. I've seen chains broken. I've seen marriages mended. I've seen people healed. I've seen, I've seen the Holy Spirit move in my life. He has changed me, so I believe because he has changed me. And if he's changed me, he can change your situation too in Jesus' name. Amen? I've seen him move, I have felt his presence, and I have heard his voice. Amen. I have read his word, and I believe. I believe. Do you believe what is in here? Do you believe what the word of God says? Amen. Before he showed me signs and wonders, I believed. Before anyone laid hands on me, I believed. Before anyone ever prophesied, before pastor ever asked me to be part of this amazing team, I believed. Amen. 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 Praise God. We have to put our faith to work. I put my faith to work. I believe. It is the key ingredient to a fulfilled life of Christ. To be a follower of Christ, you must believe. Amen. Amen. And it starts at the very beginning, at the very beginning, God, our creator, made us in his image, his spiritual perfect image, strong, powerful, full of authority. He made us a light to illuminate the darkness. So we're going to read from the first book of the Bible, Genesis 1, thank you, 26. Let's read together. It says, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him Male and female, he created them. Amen? Amen? This is the basis of all human life. And whether you believe it or not, does not make it any less true, does not make God's word any less true just because you may not believe this. Amen. And it's a good start to believing the rest of the Bible. Amen? Because if you believe this, I mean, this is supernatural what we're seeing right now that God formed us. If you can believe that, then you can believe the rest of the Bible. Amen? It's the first chapter, the first book. So if you could put your faith in that, in that small two scriptures that we just read, it says that he gave us dominion, us. Verse 26, can you go back? It's very notable here. Thank you. That he says, let them, us, amen, have dominion. He gave us all dominion amen. over all the earth, amen? amen, all of it, over your home, over your kids, over your spouse, 
over your workplace. He gave you dominion. Amen. Amen? We have to start with ourselves. We have dominion over ourselves. It takes those small steps of faith that we assert that dominion over ourselves. I believe. I'm going to walk in faith. I'm going to walk in the word of God. You share that with your spouse, your husband, or your wife. Do you believe? Let's read the word of God together. Let's hear the word of God together. Children, this is what your parents believe. We are made in the image of God. Amen. We're walking in faith. We're going to read the word. We're going to learn about it. We're going to let the Holy Spirit speak to us, meditate to us. You're going to take it to work. You're going to share it with those around you. You have dominion. Amen? Amen. What happened to Maria Elena? She looks different today. She has dominion. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amaria goes to school. What's different about Amaria today? She has dominion. Amen. Amen? She's made in the image of God. Amen. You go to your friend's house. You go to the nail salon. You go to the supermarket, the barber shop. What's going on with you? I have dominion. I know who I am. I'm in the, made in the image of God. Amen? Amen. But you have to believe it. Amen. Can't just walk the walk. Amen. You're going to talk the talk, Amen. which is all the words that are right here in the Bible. Amen. Teach you everything to say, every situation. Let me compose myself. Amen. <laughs> and the word says that those creeping, crawling things, sometimes those creeping, crawling things are negative thoughts. Sometimes those creeping, crawling things are fiery darts, condemnation, feelings of guilt, feelings of shame, embarrassment. Sometimes those are just things that test your patience, that pluck that little nerve. Sometimes those creeping, crawling things are just one attack after another. You're going to guard yourself with the word of God. Amen. 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 You're going to ground yourself in the word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 With the promises of God. Amen. With the spirit of God. Amen? Amen? And I say this to believers who say these things over themselves. And I am guilty. So this meditate, this ministers to me as well. When we say things like, I am so overwhelmed. I am so tired. I'm so defeated, I'm weary, alone, confused, I'm weak, I'm deserted, I'm failing. Don't think that just because someone is sitting next to you and they're a believer, they have never felt these things, thought these things, or said these things aloud over themselves. I want to encourage you, I want to encourage you that we are here as the body of Christ to support one another to be here for one another, to pray over one another, to give the word of God to one another. So this word of God I want to give you, we can go back to Deuteronomy, please. Thank you. 31, Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. It says, be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you he will not leave you or forsake you. And before we go to the next verse, I just want to give a little bit of backstory. The people of Israel, the people that were taken out of Egypt, are now crossing into Canaan. Moses is 120 years old. He is not crossing over. Joshua is now in charge. And this is Moses' words to Joshua and the people. Okay, verse 7. This is encouragement from Moses, that Moses called Joshua and said to him, in the sight of all Israel, be strong and of good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. If you were Joshua, would you be a little wobbly in the knees right now? Right? We're leaving Moses behind. We're starting a new chapter. And look at the words of encouragement that are coming from the person that he served with. Verse 8. Thank you. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Amen. Some of you are the Joshua's of your household. Some of you are the Joshua's of your workplace. Some of you are the Joshua of your social circles. 
But the word of God says, be strong and of good courage. Because God goes with you. Amen. He will not leave you or forsake you. verses, three verses in this entire Bible says that about our Lord. Do you believe that? Amen. And if you could believe that, then imagine what the rest of the Bible has to say. Amen. So I encourage you, I encourage you, if you do not have a daily habit of getting into the word, I encourage you that with these short verses that you could see what the Lord has to say about you, that he is for you. He is for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are created in God's perfect image. We are made with purpose and intent. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're not a happy accident. We're not just a blob put together and then little appendages came out and we named them arms and legs and then we figured out how to use them. And then little appendages came from that, and we named them fingers and toes, and we learned how to use them. We taught ourselves how to use them. I'm going to show you what the Word of God says. Amen. Because if that was the case, then we should probably get ready for something else to grow, right? <laughs> but you know what? That doesn't even matter. Because the Spirit of the Lord says that it isn't arms and it isn't legs. It is not fingers, it is not toes that make us in God's image. It is the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit of God. Amen. His love for us when he created us in his image. The word of God that dwells in us. It is the understanding that he gave to us. He didn't give the understanding to monkeys or baboons or apes. He gave it to us. Amen. 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 He breathed his breath of life into us. Amen. Amen. And a word I got when we were here and we were praying is that he breathed that breath of life into Adam. And that same spirit and that same breath, generation over generation after generation, is in us today. That is the Holy Spirit that is in us from the beginning. Amen. Amen. From the beginning. He never left us or forsake us. We have always been made in his image. Amen. Amen. And he didn't stop there. Because then he gave us the mind of Christ. Amen. The mind of Christ. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 2.10, please. Thank you. And let's read, please. It says, but God now unveils these profound realities to us by the Spirit. Yes, he has revealed to us his inmost heart and deepest mysteries through the Holy Spirit who constantly explores all things. Amen? Let's keep going. After all, who can really see into a person's heart and know his hidden impulses except for that person's spirit? So it is with God. His thoughts and secrets are only fully understood by his spirit, the spirit of God. Amen? For we did not receive the spirit of this world system, but the spirit of God, so that we might expect to understand and experience 
all that grace has lavished upon us. Amen? Let's keep going. And we articulate these realities with the words imparted to us by the Spirit and not by the words taught by human wisdom. We join together Spirit-revealed truths with Spirit-revealed words. Amen? Verse 14. Someone living in an entirely human level rejects the revelations of God's Spirit, for they can make no sense to him. He can't understand the revelations of the Spirit because they are only discovered by the illumination of the Spirit. Are you with me, Hudson Church? Verse 15. Those who live in the Spirit are able to carefully evaluate all things, and they are subject to the scrutiny of no one but God. We're going to take verse 16 into the New King James. Well, we can read it, and then we'll change over. I'm sorry. Thank you. I wanted to look at the last verse in the New King James. So it says, for who, for who has ever intimately known the mind of the Lord Yahweh well enough to become his counselor? Christ has, and we possess Christ's perceptions. Let's look at it in the New King James. It says, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Amen? We have the mind of Christ. We have the spirit of the Lord. He has given us everything that we need. Every single thing that we need. He has equipped us in Jesus' name. Amen? Praise the Lord that we have the mind of Christ. Not the spirit of confusion, not the spirit of fear, but the spirit of the Lord that dwells in us. Amen. Amen. We have power. We have love. We have a sound mind. Can we go to 2 Timothy 1.7, please? I just want to pull that up. Amen. Thank you. No, that's not. That's not it. It's okay. 2 Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. But of power and of love, and of a sound mind. Amen? Amen? He has equipped us. He didn't just give us his spirit and then say, okay, go figure it out. Amen? He gave us his spirit. He gave us the mind of Christ so that we can discern all things through the spirit. As the spirit is moving and constantly assessing all things, it's constantly revealing to us. Amen? Well, we have to take that intimate time to be able to listen to be in communication with him, to be in relationship with him, to talk with him, to listen. Amen. What does he want me to do? What does he want me to say? What does he want me to pray? How does he want me to reveal himself to this person, to that person? That person's a believer. How can I pray for them? That person's not a believer. What can I say to them? The spirit is constantly moving through you. Amen? Amen. 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 It says the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. We're learning that through Pastor Elias' teaching. It's able to cut through the truth and the lie. Amen? It is able to cut away those spirits that try to weigh us down, that try to drag us so that we cannot complete our race, so that we cannot even put one foot in front of the other. But every runner starts somewhere. Every runner starts at the beginning. Okay? Even if it's just a walk, even if it's a little jog, right? If it's a, a little bit of a hop, I don't know, a skip, jump, whatever. But every runner starts somewhere. Amen? So we should start at the beginning. Believe words, God's word. Believe what it says about you, that you're created in his image. Because if you can believe that, then that's the first step to believing more of the Bible. Amen? In the times that we're living, some of us, we need to start sprinting. But some of us haven't even gotten off the bench. Like, we may have to, like, limber up, right? It's time to get warmed up. It's time to start limbering up. It's time to start stretching, <laughs> familia. Like, come on, we need racers. We need runners. Amen? We're in this race to win. Amen? We have already won. Amen? But we have to run the race, your own race, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Got to limber up, guys. It's 2022. It's our year. Amen. It's our year to be bold. 
It's our year to develop our gifts. It's our year to be out there preaching the word of God, joining ministries, creating ministries, growing this church in Jesus' name. Amen. We have the mind of Christ. So what does that mean to have the mind of Christ? Most simply stated, when we believe in him, when we believe in his sacrifice, God gives us access to everything he gave Jesus access to. And what Jesus receives from God, he shares with us. He reveals it to us through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's look at John 16, 12, please. Thank you. This is Jesus' words to his disciples. It says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. Let's keep going. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Amen? Verse 14, he will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit is declaring to you the word of God. The Old Testament testifies of Jesus, and the New Testament reveals Jesus. Amen. Amen? Jesus, beginning to end in this book, whatever version you buy, whatever translation, Jesus, from beginning to end. Amen? Amen. My time is running short, so I just want to end with this one, with this one verse. We'll wrap up with this one, but it shows a glimpse of Jesus in the Old Testament so that maybe this will open, continually open your spiritual eyes to seek Jesus in the Bible. Let's start with the Isaiah 11, please. And we're going to read the first four verses. Let's read them together. Amen? It says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Amen? The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Verse 3, his delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. Verse 4, but with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, the word of God, and with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. Amen. Jesus. Amen. This is Jesus. And if you go back to verse 2, please. Thank you. The spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, and knowledge. Fear of the Lord, Amen. the Spirit of God, Amen. the same Spirit that dwells in us. Amen. We have the same Spirit. Amen. Amen. Made in the image of God, given the mind of Christ, we have the same Spirit, Hudson Church. Amen. Do you believe Amen. in Jesus' name? Yes. Amen. Amen.